visiting with Kevin Blackestone, a co-producer of Imagining the Indians, uh, something that we've talked about already on, on WTOP. We, we see him on ESPN. Or we read him in the Washington Post. We, he, he's busy at the University of Maryland. In fact, I have no idea how he has time to, to spend with me this afternoon. But in all seriousness, this is an important topic. We, we learned today that Washington's NFL team is going to retire its name. And on the surface, that sounds significant. But what that team is doing, is that, is that going far enough? Well, I don't know that what that team is doing alone is going far enough. And quite frankly, we don't know all of what they're going to do yet right? Because all they announced was they're not going to have the name um, and that they're going to go in another, in another direction. But we don't know what that direction is. The, they didn't have a press conference, so we can't ask Dan Snyder or any of the other executives about it. Um, they turned out the press release on stationery with the logo um, emblazoned on it and the, the name that they're getting rid of. So um, there's still some, some reckoning, I think, to to go on here, the only thing we know is is that the 87-year-old nickname um, that is appropriate is going to be gone. It's going to be gone, but it's not yet. And is that a bit no. disingenuous that that if you go to the NFL website, for example, you still see uh, the logo? Uh, wouldn't a, a better option have been to just say, "All right, we're dropping the name," even if you don't have the next name ready? Exactly. Just cleanse your palate of all things of that nickname. And that has not been done. Um, not only has that not been done, but they seem to have gone a along a very insular route to figure out what they're gonna do. Um, they didn't even reach out to native folk about, about this. I haven't seen or heard an apology for the hurt that it has, um, uh, that it, it has placed on, on people. Um, and then I've heard about, as you have, um, the three nicknames that seem to be at the top of the list. And all of those nicknames with people I've spoken with in the Native community are problematic. And some of those nicknames are problematic just with me um, uh, from the way I see them. So there's a lot of work to, be, to still be done here. And, and we just don't know, you know quite where this is headed other than it's not going to be what it was. Has the NFL been a disappointment to you? Uh, not only in the last couple of months, but as we discussed before we started taping, the NCAA took a pretty strong stance a while ago yep. on uh, nicknames. Y your, your thoughts on that? Yeah, I mean, they could have stepped in at any time, the other 31 owners, and said, you know, we can't be a part of this any longer. I mean, we've been going through trademark, um, trademark cases about this since 1992, all of which, by the way, have been won on the side of, of, of Native Americans. It's just technicalities. Um, that have, have come into play that have tripped things up. Um, certainly, Roger Goodell um, could have pulled Dan Snyder aside and said, we, we've got to make a change, and we'll, we'll help you make that change. Um, other leagues have done it. We've seen it in the NBA. Uh, we've seen it right here in this, you know, in this city. Um, and as you pointed out, we've seen it with, uh, with, with teams um, in, in, in college sports. So certainly someone – in the NFL could have taken um, a leadership role in this and for whatever reasons um, decided not to. You mentioned the, the nicknames that are being talked about. The, the Warriors is, is often mentioned. Uh, I'm seeing Red Wolves. Uh, right. Often uh, Red, red Tails. Um, and I think those are probably the three you were maybe thinking exactly. of or if there was another one. Uh, your take on that speculation and, and what that says. You know what? It's amazing that we just can't make a break from the imagery, right? They've got to hold on to the R. They want to hold on to the hashtag, the hashtag of their fans, the, the hashtag HTTR. Um, they're holding on to the colors. Um, and, and to me, red wolves and red tails mimics what you were trying to get away from. And also just the idea of red and what that means to Native people also is a reminder of what you were. And that's not a clean enough break for me. Um, and Red Tails, I think, is interesting because FIWA brought up that it's the nickname of the Tuskegee Airmen. And it seems to me to be a bone that the, uh, that the team's executives and owner are throwing to throwing the black, black fans, some way to placate us, to make us feel better. Um, but there is enough militarization 
of NFL game days for me. I don't need, we've got, we've got bombs bursting in the air. We've got the presentation of the colors. We've got the flyover of, of war machinery. Um, I don't need a team named after uh, uh, a military um, troops nickname. Uh, I, I, don't, I don't need that. And not only that, that reminds me also of segregation. Sure, the Tuskegee Airmen overcame great odds, but it also reminds me of the odds that they had to overcome. So um, I, I, don't, I don't particularly like that name either. And, and, and Warriors is the same thing. Once again, it's Native American imagery. Uh, I don't understand why it's so difficult just to go in a completely different direction. You know, you look at the WNBA, and half of the teams, I think, have names after inanimate objects, right? Um, you know, the fever, the sparks, um, or maybe after another animal, the lynx um, come to mind, the liberty up in New York. Um, and those seem to be fine with their fan base. And I think we, too, could, could, could make that adjustment. You know, and again, it's it's not a transparent process, or I must admit, I I don't know. Maybe you know who's all involved in this review process, but but perhaps is is that con the concern or why they uh, can't seem to move on? Because you you need to include more people, or, or what would you like to see, especially as you talk to the Native American community? Sure, you would think that you would reach out to the Native American Native American community and say, you know what, uh, we're sorry, we we finally seen the light. And we want to make sure that whatever we come up with um, in the future is not something that is offensive. And hopefully you all can help us uh, in this process. Uh, as far as we know, uh, that didn't happen. Um, you know, they maybe even could take the, 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 uh, the route that Abe Poland did uh, when he decided to change the name from the, uh, get rid of the name Bullets. Um, and, he, and my memory is, and I wasn't living here at the time, but he had a citywide competition for the name. Um, some people will argue that the Wizards was not the winning name, <laughs> but, and he, he, he hewed to that for whatever reasons. Um, but you could do something like that, involve the, involve the community uh, in, in picking a name, um, and not just have this, this very insular um, uh, process. This, you're not picking a GM. You're picking a name that's going to be representative of the team for this entire region uh, that has rooted for it for so many years. And as you mentioned, Mr. Poland, uh, regardless of the, the selection of the name, his, his, his reason was sincere, and he, he believed why uh, bullets need to, needed to be changed. Right. It, it, this gets back to it, it. It sounds like one of the big glaring things, regardless of, of where we go with a team name, is from the team or, again, the NFL, there, there, there seems to be an apology missing here, not an admission that there was a problem. Which shows me that nothing has been learned yet. Nothing has been learned. Um, this is a time for reconciliation. Uh, this is a time to say, you know what, we erred. And we now, now we understand. This is a time to say we've been through an educational process here. Um, but you've heard none of that. And that's what makes this um, so disingenuous to me, uh, so tone deaf, um, that no one has said that. And then, um, you know, Ron Rivera has been here a few months and all of a sudden, he's pulled into this. And you can see how his mindset on this has changed um, in the span of about 72 hours, right? At one point he said, uh, this is an issue for another time. I'm from another generation. Uh, we'll worry about it later. And then a few days later, he's part of the statement from the team saying everything is going to change. And then for some reason, tied the name change into honoring the military, uh, which I com completely don't, um, don't understand. The military doesn't have anything to do with this. Uh, but, um, yeah, I just think it needs to be uh, a, broader, a, a broader process. I mean, after all, pro, um, pro sports teams are a public-private partnership, um, and I think the, the public should be involved in this. And it, it sounds like, obviously, we, we have a, a serious education problem. That's part of probably why the, the film that you're, the, you're working on, that you hope can help educate, because... I, I, I'm presuming here that you're not Native American, but yet I'm not. You, prob you probably learned a lot through this process that you didn't know about the pain and the hurt. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I mean, I didn't, uh, I, you know, I grew up in this city. I grew up in Section 312 of RFK Stadium with my family. I was going to games, sitting on my parents' lap before I could probably, you know, before I could walk. Um, uh, I was there for all the great games, um, beating the Cowboys, 
26-3, uh, to which to me is still the greatest victory this team ever, ever had. Um, uh, and it wasn't until 1992 when I was going to the Super Bowl that I encountered, um, uh, I encountered some displeasure with the name. There was a big protest going on outside the Metrodome, a couple blocks outside the Metrodome, um, of Native folk um, upset about the name. And a few years later, I was writing a column about uh, Midland Lee High School in, in, in Midland, Texas, and how the NAACP there was trying to get Midland Lee to get rid of all of its Confederate imagery because they felt that was an affront to uh, the black community there, and particularly to um, their black kids who were playing sports and for Midland Lee and bringing in all this success. And that was the first time I made the connection. I was like, well, I, I agree with that. And I can see how Native folk would also want to do away with the team that I grew up rooting for. That's when I first, you know, made the connection. And, and, and fast forward to 2014, uh, when uh, the, 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 trademark, um, uh, uh, the, the trademark board canceled the trademark for the team, I thought, you know what, this is, this is a moment that needs to be documented. Because this is going to push the nickname issue off the ledge. Um, and I hooked up with Sam Bardley, a uh, local filmmaker at the time, uh, well, still is, um, who did the Lynn Bias uh, 30 for 30 doc on ESPN. And we started strategizing around it. And uh, we produced a trailer and we tried to raise some money and couldn't quite get what we needed. Um, and then it seemed like uh, with the Slants case, you remember the rock group who, who um, uh, sued for the right to use the name The Slants, even though it was a slur. Um, they won their case, and that kind of seemed to uh, let Washington off the hook. Um, but all along, all along, there were still high schools that were dumping the name, and dumping the imagery. And it would be another college, small college here or there, who would get rid of it. Um, but it was only this team that was, that was dug in. And uh, yeah, I've done a lot of study over the years just about the, the etymology of the word, um, how it came to be um, wielded, um, what it's meant to uh, Native folk who I've been in touch with. Um, and then all of a sudden, these last few weeks, the wrecking ball, um, the energy from the wrecking ball after George Floyd's death that swept this country up into a reckoning about racial injustice. Um, Topple Confederate imagery that was uh, remindful of white supremacy. And who gets knocked down in the process? George Preston Marshall. And so all of a sudden, it all starts to come back. And eventually, we saw Christopher Columbus statues come down. Um, so it has been a, uh, a great learning process. It's an educational process. Um, and it's a, it's a history that people need to know. And I think if they know it and they understand it, they come to understand it, they'll have a better understanding as to why this is such an important moment. And that's probably why your film is so important, the project you're working on, Imagining the Indian, because yep. it, it, the central theme here is it, it's all about uh, education. We might not understand why something bothers somebody unless we're actually in their shoes. Absolutely, and that's what we're trying to, uh, that's what we're trying to do. You know, when we started this film, it was a film to educate people about the importance of this movement to eradicate um, Native imagery uh, in sports and beyond. Uh, and now, all of a sudden, it has morphed into a film about the actual eradication of these images, particularly right here, and how that has happened so suddenly and why it is so important. Um, there is a direct link between uh, the racial injustice that the Black Lives Matter movement um, has struck uh, in, the, in the wake of George Floyd's murder and the genocide of Native Americans um, that began in the 15th century uh, when Europeans first arrived on, on this continent. Um, and that's one of the things we're trying to, we're trying to show. Anything else I didn't ask you you'd like to, to stress uh, at this time that is not uh, bringing it back to the football team? Uh, it, it's right. still out there. Maybe, they, maybe the right thing still can be done. Yeah, I mean, I think, 
um, I would emphasize that, you know, the, the work is not done. Um, uh, this announcement uh, today that made it official um, is, is only that. Uh, we don't know what the nickname is going to be. Uh, chances are it's going to harken back to what we were trying to get away from. Um, there is um, no indication that a lesson has been learned here, um, certainly by the team uh, or the NFL. Um, but one thing we do know is that a social movement came about that forced corporate America that supports this team to have a change of heart. And that's often what happens in this country before real change happens, be it legal, legislative, um, uh, or whatever. Um, there needs to be pressure from a group of people. And this victory, you know, this, this movement that Suzanne Harjo has been working at so steadfastly since she moved here in the early 1970s um, is finally coming to fruition. And that's one of the things that I, that I hope people understand from our film. They get to know Suzanne Harjo, um, who is a civil rights legend um, in this country um, for Indian rights um, and, and for human rights, which is why a number of years ago, President Obama awarded her um, the Medal of Freedom um, for all the work that she's done um, for her people, for the original people um, um, here, and to try and eradicate um, uh, racism across this country. So